In this series, we're going to take a look at something that WordPress calls custom post types. They're sometimes called custom content types as well. By default, WordPress has a variety of post types. As a blog, its default type is post, which makes perfect sense. But then also here in the codex, we can see that they also have pages, attachments, revisions, and navigation menus. Each of these types of content are stored in the same database table, and the same information is stored about them. If we scroll down this page, we can see more information about each of them. But then we come to the section on custom post types, and in here you can create your own. They're a little easier to understand if you can see how they look once they're built. This is the admin area of a site that I used in another series about building a restaurant. There is a custom content type called Restaurant, and you can see that because it exists and there's a flag for it in the setup, there's a new menu item here called Restaurant. And inside are menu items. There are also restaurant tags and there's a brief settings page. If we click menu items, you can see the items here. The structure is exactly like the admin archive for posts or pages. But we have different fields, like price. And there's a photo shown right here in the admin area. If we edit one, you can see it looks like a regular post. But over here on the right, there's an option for price. This is not a very complicated custom content type. They can have many meta boxes with many extra fields. This one simply doesn't. Now, once you've created this, on the front end, you can create an archive, just like a post archive. And then when you click on one, it goes to a single, just like a single post. Throughout this series, I'm going to show you how to build a system like this using a plugin called Easy Content Types. I hope you'll follow along and we'll make something really cool. Custom post types can be a little complicated to create. It requires a fair amount of code and getting things organized just so. This is the page for the function register post type and it takes a great number of input. These are reserved post types. You cannot use those names. And you should not use these names. And at first blush, it looks pretty simple. It takes a post type and some arguments. But let's take a look at the arguments. It starts here. And goes down to here. And then this section is just for the capability argument. And it goes further down to here. And there are some examples. Here's a very nice simple one. But then it can get elaborate quite quickly. So for this reason, during this series, we're going to use a plugin called Easy Content Types by Pippin Williamson. It's not a free plugin. You can see it's $30 for a single site, $57 for 2 to 5, and $93 for unlimited. One of the great things about it is that it provides a nice GUI for creating all that stuff. You still should know what all the options are, but it makes it much, much harder to miss a comma and mess everything up. If we scroll down, you can see that it lists all of the features. And then he has a great number of screenshots to show how things work. I'm going to walk you through creating a custom content type and then rendering your information on the front end using easy content types. The first thing we're going to do here is install the easy content types plugin. Since it's a paid plugin, I bought it at their site and downloaded the zip file. So now we'll upload that.
And there we are. Now on the bottom left we have a content types menu item. We're going to go through each of these options, but we're going to start first with post types. And this is where you create one. In this video we're going to deal with these top two boxes. We're going to put in a post type name. This should be all lowercase and not have spaces. And you'll note over here that it says it should be no longer than 10 letters. And throughout Easy Content Types, there are these help bubbles. We're going to make a post type called Animals. In the next box, we're going to make labels for this post type. These are going to be the words that get used in the nav item on the left. So the singular is Animal, and the plural is Animals. You'll note here there's a button called Show Advanced Labels. And there are quite a few other labels. These will automatically populate themselves using the singular and plural labels if you wish. If you don't wish, you can go through and create your own. However, I would suggest you not create them at first and then go back in and edit because they will have been pre-populated and it makes it a lot easier. In our next video, we're going to take a look at some of the post type options and we'll explain what each one of them means. In our last video, we took a look at how we want to name our custom post types. In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the options. The first option we're going to look at is called Hierarchical, and it says, enabling this that items can have parents and child items. And I can easily show you an example. This is a plain old WordPress page that I created. It's a test page. And over here in Page Attributes, one of our options is Parent. And we could set Sample Page to be its parent. Now technologically, all we've done is make a little change in the database. It's up to a theme developer or plugin developer to use that change. So for example, you could create a navigation which shows indented navigation where all of the children of a certain page are indented under that page. But another perk that we get is this order. By default, all pages have an order of zero. But you could put in an arbitrary set of numbers. And then, on the front end, if you wanted, you could render them in that order. It makes it very easy to arbitrarily order your pages, or animals, or anything else that you're making. You don't have to use this ordering system, but it's there if hierarchical is turned on. Our next thing is Enable Archives. This will enable archives such as monthly and yearly for this post type. An example here is for posts. In our URL, we have slash 2015 slash 02. Now your archive does not have to be dated like this. You can name it anything you want. For your custom post types, your archive slug is going to be the post type name. So we're going to be able to go to ostraining.dev slash animals and see an archive of every animal we create. The next option is post formats. Now post formats aren't super popular yet but you can read about them in the WordPress Codex. Basically, it allows you to say that a given post is an aside, a gallery, a link, image, quote, status, video, audio, or chat. If you turn this on, then there will be a UI available in the admin when creating a new post, and they can choose one of these options. Now all that really happens when they choose one is that it applies some CSS classes to the front end so that you can make an image post look different from a quote post and different from a video post, etc. It doesn't fundamentally change your content. If you know you're not going to use them, I recommend turning them off. We have the option here to exclude from search and it's exactly what it sounds like. 
Checking this option will prevent this post type from showing up in search results. Why would you want that? Well, the post type you're making may be a utility. It may be some element of some other post type, and you don't want that to show up in search results. We're making an animal archive, and we do want those to show up in search, so I'm going to leave that unchecked. And then show in nav menus. These are the menus under appearance. Here. We have here pages, links, and categories. If we check show in nav menus, then there will be another here for animals to include over in making new navs if we wish to. We're going to leave that on. And the last thing we're going to look at is the menu icon. You don't have to set this. If you leave it blank, you'll get a little pin pusher like over here in the nav for content types. If you do want to change it, there's documentation in the WordPress codex on how to create just the right kind of image. The other little icons that WordPress uses are not actually images. They're an icon font. However, you can still use an image like Content Types does. In our next video, we'll take a look at the Supports box and all of the options there. In a previous video, we looked at how to name our post type. And in the next one after that, we did Post Type Options. Now we're going to look at Post Type Supports. These are all the different elements. These are all the different elements that can be supported on a post type. Very quickly, we have title, editor, author, thumbnail, excerpt, custom fields, comments, revisions, post tags, categories, and advanced. Now I want to show you what these will look like on the other end. This is a page. And in the top right here, we can click Screen Options. Pages support page attributes, featured images, custom fields, discussions, comments, slugs, and author. Now you'll note that some of these are checked and some aren't. Every page supports these things, but the user interface for some of these is turned off. For example, slug. We turn it on, and now down here we can change the slug. We turn on author, and now we can change the author. We'll turn everything on. And here are custom fields, discussion options, comments, slug, and author. These checkboxes merely hide the user interface but pages support all of these things. This, however, is a post. And posts support more things. We have post formats. We talked about those in a previous video, and here's the UI for that. We have categories, tags, excerpts, send trackbacks, etc. So now, under Post Type Supports, we're declaring what our post type will support. The title is the post title. I can't really think of a time when you won't want one of these on a post type. It could happen, but you almost always will want the title. That would be right here. It's pretty rare that you won't want the editor, because that's where you're going to type your information. I have made a custom post type, without the editor before, and it was for alerts for school closings, and all I needed was the title. So it's possible you might not need the editor. And then we have here author. If you don't care about the author when printing on the front end, don't include this option. That'll hold true for just about all of these. I'm making a post type for animals. And I'm going to declare right now that I'm the only person that's ever going to put an animal into my database. So I don't care about author. So I'll just uncheck that. Then there's thumbnail. 
This is the featured image for your post type. You may or may not want this. If you're never going to have a featured image, if you're always going to put the image right in the editor, then you don't need this either. I'm going to leave mine on because I think I might use it. And then there's the excerpt. Let's take a look at what excerpt looks like on a post. It's a little box right here, and it's exactly what it sounds like. You can put in an excerpt for your post. I don't think I'm ever going to use it for my animals, so I'll turn it off. And then there's custom fields. Turning off custom fields does not prevent you from adding your own fields to your post type. I know that sounds a little confusing, but they're different things. I'm going to recommend turning off custom fields, and in a later video I'll show you the consequences of that. Comments. I'm never going to have comments on my animals. So I'll just turn that right off. Revisions are great, and I recommend you leave them on. Basically, it means that WordPress will keep backed up copies of old versions of your posts for you. So that if you make a mistake, or if somebody else makes a change and you want to revert, you easily can. More than once, I've saved a lost post this way, and I recommend leaving revisions on for just about everything. Then here we have post tags and categories. These are specifically the tags and categories under posts. So unless you want to associate your custom post type with the tags and categories of posts, I'd recommend leaving these off. You can create your own tags and categories later, and I will show how to do that in another video. And lastly, there's advanced supports you can put in additional support options. I'm going to recommend you not ever do this, and I'm not even going to go into it in this video. You could learn some other things that could be supported by looking at the source code of WordPress. And once you're good enough to be looking at the source code of WordPress, then you're good enough to be messing around with this advanced supports field. So to review, for my animals, I left on title and editor, I took off author, and I left thumbnail, which is the featured image, I took off excerpts, custom fields, and comments, but I left revisions, and then I did not turn on post tags and categories. In our next video, we'll take a look at some of the advanced options. In creating our first custom post type, we first looked at the naming system, then we looked at options, then we looked at what is supported, and finally we're going to look at the advanced section. The first thing here, menu position, deals with its position in the admin menu. It wants a number, and you want to put in a number related to what you see here in the help bubble. So 0 through 4 will appear above posts here. 5 through 9 will appear between posts and media. 10 through 14 below media, etc. You'll note here that 60 is below the first separator. If you watch, we skip from link to link here, but then there's a little gap right here. That's the first separator. So you can put it right after comments before the separator, or after the separator before appearance. There are two separators, this one, and then there's another one here after settings. And you can see that here. Think carefully about what number you put in here. Think carefully about how important it is that your custom post type be right at the top. You'll note here on my left, in my admin area, I have a menu item called Duplicator and another one called Content Types. These particular things did not consider themselves important enough, regularly used enough, to be way at the top of the nav, so they put them at the bottom. Now I'm making one called Animals, and it's directly related to content. And it's similar to Posts and Pages. So I'm probably going to put mine right after Posts. So I'll give mine a 5. The next thing is the Post Type Slug. We talked a little bit about this in an earlier video, and I said that the post type name will be your slug. 
And that's the case if you leave this field blank. However, this field allows you the option to change it and to make it anything you want. Imagine for a moment that we had already created our animal's post type and we wanted to create another one called fish. And we wanted the URL to be something like slash animals slash fish. Then you would write in here animals slash fish. Note there's no slash at the beginning. WordPress will take care of that for us. And the same goes for the ending slash. We don't want that. So our post type name would be fish, but our slug would be slash animals slash fish, which makes more sense for the end user. We could do the same thing with mammals or whatever. We're probably not going to do that with our setup here. We're going to use a taxonomy for fish or mammals or whatever. So I'm actually going to leave this blank and it will use my post type name. The last thing is a little bit confusing. With front is an option which usually prepends your slug with slash blog because WordPress still thinks that it's only a blog. If you click this help bubble there's a better explanation. If your permalink structure is slash blog slash, then your links will be slash blog slash post type name if you leave this unchecked. Otherwise, your permalinks will be post type name. Basically, you always want to leave this checked because you're going to want your post type to begin with just slash, like slash animals, instead of slash blog slash animals. Now we've completely configured our post type. We have the name, we have the post type options, we have post type supports, and advanced. So I'm going to click add post type. At the top here it says post type added, you should update your permalinks now. We'll open that in a new tab. And you'll note that it's just settings, permalinks, and we'll save changes. That updates some transients within WordPress so that WordPress knows about your new post type. Now there are a few things I want to look at here before we move on. There's now an animals menu over on the left. I also want to go edit and show advanced labels. And we looked at this earlier and I said that if you leave it alone it'll pre-fill it. It did to a certain extent, but they're not very attractive. So for example, I might make this one add new animal and edit animal, etc. And then we'll save and you can see that they're there. So it's easier to go in and update your advanced labels after you've created the post type. In our last video, we created a custom post type called animals. And we talked a little bit about the advanced labels. I went in and finished those, and I wanted to show you what I ended up doing. So I have add new animal, all animals, add new animal, edit animal, etc. And you can see that reflected over here now, all animals, add new animal, etc. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's add an animal. Elephant. Now I'm going to run over to Wikipedia and grab a little text. And there we are. Some information about elephants. I'm going to click Publish. And now I can view this post. And you can see that my URL is slash animals slash elephant. And there's my title and there's my text. I also have here featured image. Let's set a featured image. And we'll update. And we'll look at the front end. And this theme takes the featured image and makes it a very large header. Themes will do different things with your featured images. Some may not render them at all. Let's take a look at screen options here. All we really have for a user interface is the featured image and the slug. 
So we no longer have options for turning on or off comments or custom fields or things like that. Now all we've done so far is create a very simple custom post type. Title, text, and featured image are all we really have. But we're going to want to add any number of extra things. So we're going to begin looking at adding meta boxes to your custom post type. Meta information is information about other information. So for example, we're looking here at a post, and the excerpt would be information about your post. So this would be meta information. And the box in which this excerpt is contained is called a meta box. And here's another one for custom fields, and another for featured image, and another for tags, and another for categories. All of these are meta boxes. Meta boxes can hold pretty much anything. It's just a box to hold a UI for some information. I'm going to show you how to create a new meta box. Now, if we were to code this, we would use the function add meta box. And here they make it look really easy. But you also need to set all the parameters and it ends up looking like a wall of code like this. Fortunately, Easy Content Types has a very nice user interface for doing that. And we're going to take our elephant here, and we're going to make a meta box down here to hold information about our animals. We're going to make a field for habitat, and a field for what they eat. And we'll put those both in a meta box. Another cool thing about meta boxes that I'd like to show you is that they're movable. You can click the title bar and move them around within the UI. Now this is only reflected for the user that you are logged in as. So for example, if you use featured image a lot but tags and categories rarely, you simply move it up, maybe even right to the top. Now this is not going to affect any other users, but it will remain there for you until you move it someplace else. We're going to create our first meta box. We're going to go under content types to meta boxes. We need to give it a name. This will be visible at the top of the meta box. So give it something that makes sense. The one we're making is going to be information about our animals. So we'll call it Animal Details. And you'll note here that you can attach it to any type of post type. You could create a custom meta box with this tool for posts, or pages, or media, or revisions, or even navigation menu items. But we're going to attach it to animals. You'll also note that these pages are not ordered alphabetically, but rather in the order they were created. So if you create a new post type and then go to create a new meta box, you're always going to want the bottom one. Next we have context. And our options are normal, advanced, and side. Advanced and normal are in the main column with advanced being above normal whereas side is in the right in a narrow column. So, for example, normal and advanced would be here, with advanced being above any normal boxes. If there are other advanced boxes, it will come in under those because it was created later. But optionally, you could also put it in the side, and it would be over here on the right with these others. When building my own, I always make it advanced, because I want it at the top of the main column. Occasionally I'll make a meta box that I want on the right, but it's pretty rare. Then there's priority. High, core, and low. Meta boxes with high priorities will appear above boxes with default priority, for example. This is simply another way to order your boxes. It's not nearly as sophisticated as using a number, like in the nav menus, but it works. So usually when I'm making my own, again, I make it high. 
And here we have the option to make it render only on specific post and page IDs. I have never used this, and I can't even think of a scenario you would want to. But we could, for example, make this meta box appear only for elephants. But we don't want to, so we're just going to leave it the way it is. So we click Add Meta Box. And now we have one. You can see here our name is Animal Details. It has an ID called Animal Details, all one word. It's attached to animals. The context is advanced, the priority is high, and we don't have any fields in it yet. But let's go edit our elephant. And here we have a meta box called Animal Details with nothing in it. In our next video, we'll take a look at putting some fields in there. In our last video, we took a look at creating a custom meta box. Now that we have it, let's put some fields into it. Over on the right here, we can choose Edit Fields. We only have four options. Field name, we'll put in Habitat. A field ID, it says this is optional. If you don't put anything in, it'll use the field name, but make it all lowercase and take out spaces and things like that. And then an optional field description. I'll leave that off for now, and then we'll come back and put it in in a few minutes. And then type. Text is a one-line field, similar to the title. This is used for quite short text. Then we have text area, and we can choose to enable the rich editor for this text area if we wish. We also have select, which is a drop-down box, similar to this one. We have check boxes, multi-check, which is like a select box, but you can choose more than one option. Radio, which gives you an array of options, but you can only choose one. A date field, which looks like a regular text field, but when you click it, a little calendar pops up. An upload field, so that you can upload an image or whatever into the media library. A slider, which is not like an image slider, but rather a UI that you can grab with your mouse and move it from 0 to 100. Repeatable, which is actually repeatable text, so you could, in the UI, create multiple text fields. And then repeatable upload, which is similar, but just for uploads. Right now, we're going to choose text area and enable the rich editor. Now I will add field. You'll note that our ID has ECPT prepended to it. That's to keep it separate from any other IDs that might be created by another app. Now we have here a short code. If we wanted to, we could drop that directly into our content area, and it would render the contents on the front end. We're not going to do it that way. I'll show you a better way. Here's our elephant. We reload. And now we have habitat. And we can type all we want. Let's add a few more just to experiment. Let's just put in a date. And we'll put in a description on this one. And we'll make it date. Add field. So now you can see what a date type looks like. It looks like a text box, but when you click, you can choose a date and it prefills it that way. And then here you can see what a description looks like. It puts it immediately under. Now, here I want to point out these little crosses. You can grab them and drag them. And just like that, we've reordered our boxes. Now date is at the top. I don't actually want date, so I'm going to hit delete. Let's make some radio buttons so you can see how those work. And now we can put in our options, comma separated.
we'll put in bull, cow, calf, which only sort of makes sense with our content, but does a wonderful job of demonstrating our UI here. So we could choose bull, cow, or calf. We don't want that one either, though. Just for fun, let's throw in a repeatable. And we'll put that at the top so we don't have to scroll as far. And here's a repeatable field. So I can make thing one. Thing two, thing three, and so on. Now on the front end, this is going to come out like an array, and I'll show you how to deal with that. Let's get rid of our repeatable field, because we don't really want that for our animals. Let me show you what a slider looks like. We'll make the maximum value be 100. Put that above habitat. And now we have a slider. And all it does is increment numbers in a text field. I'm not going to go over the others. Upload is exactly like the upload process for a featured image or something like that. Select boxes and check boxes are exactly like every other website. We're going to make one more text area. We'll call it diet. Now to demonstrate how to use radio buttons on the front end, I'm going to create some on the back end here. So I'm going to make an option to make this animal visible or not on the front end. So we'll call it visible. We'll make it radio. We'll make our default yes. And the other option, no. Now let's take a look at our animal. So we have our title, text for the description, habitat, diet, and the option to make it visible or not. Now we could just simply write habitat and diet in this main text area. And in this particular case, that would probably work just fine. However, often you want to separate your information into different chunks so that you can put them in different places on your page. This is going to allow us to do that. In our last video, we created some meta fields. We're going to populate those, and I'll show you how easy it is to add information. I'm going to shamelessly borrow information from Wikipedia for our elephants. And right here, it talks about habitat. Now, because I'm using a rich text editor here, it kept all of the links intact. If I had not chosen the rich text editor, I would have gotten just the plain text. And you can click over here to text, and you can see all of the HTML there. Now let's grab some information about diet. I'm just going to grab that one line. You'll note that my box is actually much larger than I need. That's totally fine. It doesn't matter how much information you put in here. You could put in lots or only little. And then for visibility, I'm going to say, yes, I want this visible on the front end. And now I'm going to hit update. And that's all there is to it. Now that information is stored there. Now if I view this animal, you'll note that we do not see any of that extra information. That's because we need to create new templates for this. And we're going to do that in some later videos. I did show you earlier that you could put a shortcode in and render some of that information. I'll show you that right now. 
Let's grab our habitat field. I'm going to copy that with Command C on the Mac. And I could paste that right there and hit update. And there's the habitat information. So I could write like this. There. However, if I'm going to do it that way, I didn't really need all of this extra meta boxes. Oh no, look, there are my revisions, which I don't actually want right now, so I'm going to turn them off. There we go. So if I'm simply going to print this extra information right in this box, I could have just typed it there. So I'm going to take it back out, and I will show you a better way to render it later on. In this video, we're going to take a look at the concept of taxonomies. Here we can see that Wikipedia says taxonomy is the practice and science of classification. Basically, taxonomies allow us to organize things. In WordPress, we have four default taxonomies. Category, Tag, Link Category, and Post Formats. Let's take a look at what those look like. Here at the top, we have Format, and we can choose any one of them. Then we have Categories, and then we have Tags. Categories and tags are extraordinarily similar, but categories are hierarchical, which means they can have parent and child categories. Let's add a new category, and you can see how that looks. And then we'll add another one. We'll make it a child of computers. There. Now tags cannot have parents and children. And you can enter more than one in at once. Now let's update. And there we are. Now in the future, we can choose from most used and just click to add. I can't add these right now because they're already there. Now also, in the left, under Posts, you can see that there's a Categories option. And here you can manage your categories, so you could come in and create a whole bunch at once. Or edit some existing ones, and those edits would automatically update on every post that has that category. And the same holds true for tags. The only difference is, there's no option here for Parent like there was in Category. At the top here, you can see Popular Tags. And this is actually a tag cloud, so the more popular a tag is, the larger it's rendered. So the font actually gets bigger. So if flying were used much more than biking and skiing, then the word flying would be much bigger. Now that's just an attribute of the way they're rendered here. You don't have to do that with your own taxonomy. For our animals, we're going to make some of our own taxonomies. We're going to make one for habitat, which will be a little bit different from the text field. We'll also make a taxonomy for class, and we could put in whether it's a mammal, a reptile, or a fish, etc. Then we'll throw in another taxonomy that's not hierarchical, so it'll act like tags, and you can see how we'll interact with that. We're going to create a taxonomy. The first one is going to be for habitat. We go to Content Types, Taxonomies. This is somewhat similar to creating a new content type, but without so many options. We're going to create a name. We want it to be all lowercase, because it's going to be used by the computer as opposed to by people. Our singular label is like that, and then plural like that. And then there are a few options. The first one is hierarchical. We've covered this a little bit. If it's hierarchical, it can have children. 
If it's not, it cannot. This also determines to a certain extent the user interface. If it's hierarchical, then you'll see checkboxes for existing items. If it's not hierarchical, it'll act like tags. We're going to make ours hierarchical. Show tag cloud simply means that we have the option to show a tag cloud. I don't want that for Habitat, so I'm going to choose not. And then show in nav menus. Again, similar to the custom content type, it's talking about the menus here under appearance. Slug. You can set something yourself, or if you don't, it will take the taxonomy name. And then there's disable with front. Similar to the custom post type, this takes off slash blog if it exists. We want to disable that. Before we click Add Taxonomy, we have to associate this taxonomy with a post type. We're going to associate it with animals. There. Now at the top it says Taxonomy Added. Don't forget, you can customize your taxonomy archive layouts with template files. That's exactly what we're going to do in a later video. Here you can see the one we created, Habitat, Singular, Plural, associated with animals, the slug is habitat, its attributes, and it tells us how to name our template file. We'll take a look at using this taxonomy in the next video. In our last video we created a taxonomy called Habitats. In this one I'll show you how to use it. Under animals there's now a link for habitats. And this works exactly like categories for posts. You can create a name, give it a slug if you wish, optionally have a parent, and then there's a description. Let's say jungle for our first one. If I leave slug blank, it'll be jungle. I don't have a parent available. And I'm not going to put in a description. Some themes support the description and will render it, and some don't. We'll take a look at that in another video. There. Now I have jungle as a habitat. Now if I go to all animals and edit my elephant, I can choose jungle, but I can also add a new habitat. There. Now I hit update. And my elephant is in desert, jungle, savanna, and wetlands. Oh, I want to go back to the habitats page here and note that there's a view option here. Let's take a look at what that gets us. Nothing at all. Because after we create our taxonomy, we need to resave our permalinks. And now I will reload this one. And there we are. Now my URL is slash habitat slash desert. And this is a term archive. This page is a term archive, meaning it is the archive page for desert. The default template for term archives is to show full content as well as show a large image at the top. We're going to change that later to look more like a list. Now that we've created the habitat, we'll create another taxonomy for class. There. Now we have a class taxonomy, and we'll add one more that is not hierarchical. Now we'll add one for diet.
and we'll make this one not hierarchical, and I'll show you how that works. And we'll give it the ability to have a tag cloud. There we are. Now let's save our permalinks. And then we'll look at diets. And on this page, it looks very, very similar to the other, but we don't have the option for parent. But if we go edit our elephant, here we have classes and diets. We'll add a class. And we'll choose grasses, comma, Berries, comma, leaves. And I'm sure there's more, but this will work for now. Let me hit update. And there we are. Now we automatically have archive pages for habitats, classes, and diets. In future videos, I'll show you how we're going to create template files so that we can make these render really nicely. In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the settings options for easy content types. They're here under the content types nav option. And right here at the top, we have the option to have this plugin create for us template pages for both singles and archives. We'll go ahead and check those. And later on, when we're looking at these, we may use them, but we may get rid of them and create our own. But this gives us the option to see what they're going to make. And then we have the same option for taxonomies. Then we have a section here where we can set what level of user can manage the options under the content types plugin, including post types, taxonomies, meta boxes, etc. I'm going to leave this at admin. We have the option to render short codes in meta fields. You may or may not need this. If you don't need it, leave it off. It'll remove one more step of processing and make things slightly faster. But if you do need to put short codes into meta fields, just turn this on. The very rarely issue occurs only with the shop e-commerce plugin. And then there's an option here to disable taxonomy archives. Check this box to disable the automatic filter applied to taxonomy archives. This fixes the problem with 404s in taxonomy archives, but it's possible it could cause problems with some themes. I've never actually needed to use this, so you probably won't either. But if you get an issue with taxonomy archives returning 404s, try checking this box. Here we can choose the date format we want when using the date picker. Here are our options. You can use any of these letters. So for example, F space J comma space Y space lower G colon I space A gives you November 6, 2010, 12.50 a.m. or whatever the date is. I'm going to leave it blank and use the default. And then here we have the option to auto display meta field values and it lists every post type. There are posts, page, attachment, animals, and then it would go on and on if there were. I'm not going to use any of these because I don't want any of my content automatically displayed. I want it to display exactly where I put it. So we're going to leave all of these unchecked. But it does say that if we want to do it manually, we can use the function ECPT display meta. And we'll take a look at that when we're working with our own template files. And that's it for the settings. There's not a whole lot going on here, and it's not very hard to understand. I actually rarely choose to have it create templates for me. I usually make my own. But I'd like to take a look at what it's going to create, so that you know what's coming if you choose to use it. We're going to take a look at one last function of easy content types, and that's the export option. It's not what you might think. Export allows you to see the code that would be used to create all of this stuff if we did it manually. Here at the top we have a function called 
register animals post type. And here is a variable holding an array of labels. And you'll recognize these from when we created them. There's animals, animal, add new animal, edit animal, etc. There's taxonomies, supports, and then the post type arguments. Here we register the post type, and we want all of this to happen on init. So if you took all this code and you put it into a plugin, then your post type would continue to work, even if you disabled easy content types. The same holds true for the taxonomy export code. Here's one to register the habitat taxonomy. And you'll recognize all of the labels that we made. And here's one for the class, and here's one for diet. And again, they're all registered at init. And lastly, here's the Metabox export code. So here we're creating all of the details about the Metabox, including where it goes. And then this add action applies this code to the admin menu. And then down here, we show the Metaboxes. And as you can see, this by far has the most HTML code because we have to create the box and we have to create all of the HTML for the input boxes and the radio buttons and all that kind of stuff. So using easy content types saved you from having to write all of this code. That said, you could still take all this code, put it into a plugin, and turn off easy content types. And everything would continue to work. In the next several videos, we're going to take a look at creating custom archive and single templates for our animals custom post type. You can see here that our slug is animals. I've chosen to switch to the 2011 theme. It's a little easier to go through the first time. You can see on the home page here there's no reference to our animals content type. But if I go to slash animals, it's there. So what I'm going to do is edit my primary menu. I'm going to remove the items that are here. I'm going to add slash animals and create menu going to make it the primary menu also. And now when we reload, you can see we have an animals option. Now this is the archive for our animals. I only have one animal, so it looks like it's a single. So let's add another one real quick. I grabbed some information from Wikipedia, and I've added some habitat and diet, and I want this to be visible. So now I will publish, and we'll go back to our animals archive. And there we are. The most recent is at the top, which is an indication of how they're ordered. On this archive page, we have a page title, which simply says blog archives which this is not, so that's something we'll want to change. We don't have a photo here. We may or may not want one. We don't have any of our taxonomy information here. And it looks like we have the entire content, which could get very long. So we're going to want to change that to an excerpt. Now let's click on one. And here we have the single template, which simply has the title and the content. No image, no taxonomy information, and none of our meta information. We're going to want to add that also. We also have information here that says the entry was posted by Tofar, bookmark the permalink. We can choose to have that or not have that. So in our next video, I'll show you how we're going to edit these template files. In this video, we're going to take a look at customizing the archive template for our animals. We have at the top a title of blog archives, titles of each of our animals, and the full content. You may have guessed from the URL of this site, ostraining.dev, that I'm using a local development environment. I happen to be using desktop server. 
So I can simply open Finder, go to my home directory, and there's a Sites folder here. That holds all my sites for desktop server. I'm going to drag that right over here so that I have easy access to it. And there's OSTraining.dev. Inside it, it's just normal WordPress. So inside my WP Content folder is my Themes folder. And inside there is my 2011 folder. And that's the theme that I'm using. And right here is a file called archive-animals. To simply create a custom archive template for a custom post type, all you have to do is do archive dash and then the slug of the post type dot PHP. It doesn't customize it or anything simply by doing that, but now it exists and we can edit this archive without messing around with any of the other archives. I'm going to double click it and the editor I'm using here is called Sublime Text 2. It's not free, but there is a free demo so you can easily get it and try it. So at the top here, it says template for displaying archive pages. I'm going to make it say animal archive pages. And you don't really have to change anything else in the comments. Here we have get header, which is the site header, and then a section with an ID of primary, and then content. And then here it says we have a header and it only renders if we have posts. We're going to take out almost all of this. Here it says if is day, which means if we're looking at a single day template, which we're not. And then there's else if is month, is year. We're not going to use any of those. And the very last one is else print blog archives, which is what we have. So I'm going to take out most of this. And there we are. I'll save, and now nothing should change. And indeed not. We still have blog archives. So just to make sure we're editing the right place, I'm just going to throw an exclamation point in here. Save and reload. And here we have our exclamation point. So we know we're editing the right place. Now what we really want is to have the title of our custom post type automatically placed there, as opposed to us manually typing it in. And fortunately, WordPress has a function called post type archive title. It takes two inputs, prefix and display. So we could put in a prefix of something before the word animals, and then display means whether to display it or simply retrieve it so we can store it in a variable. We don't want to do either of those things. So I'm simply going to copy this and paste it in there and take out the old one. And now we will reload. There. Now our title is animals. It could be bigger, but that's the way this theme makes it look. If we were doing this in another theme, then it might look completely different. At the moment, we're not too concerned about looks, merely getting the right information in the right place. So now we have our archive with a proper title. Now let's look at changing the contents. Here we have something that prints out a content navigation. That's for previous and next links when there are more items than an archive page can handle. And here's where we have what we really want. It says, while we have posts, get the post, and then print it using get template part. Now get template part merely pulls in another file. And it helps keep this file from getting too long. It's looking for content and then optionally a post type format name. So it could be content-aside or content-image or whatever. I'm going to make mine be called archive-content 
animal. So now get template part is going to look for archive-content-animal.php, which doesn't actually exist. So we should go make it. So I'm going to save this and close it. Now if I reload my page, it should actually look pretty terrible because I'm asking it to render with a file that does not exist. Now you can see here in my file listing, I have a bunch of content templates. There are all the post type templates, and then there's one simply called content.php. That's the one it was using. So I'm going to copy and paste. Now that put it way at the top here, but from here I can rename it archive-content-animal and then drag it back down to where it needs to be. And now my page should look just like it did before because it's simply a copy of content.php which it was using before. In our next video we'll edit archive-content-animal.php and you'll see how we can make things look just the way we want. In our last video we took a look at editing the main archive template for our animals post type. We changed the title to animals and then we updated it to call a custom template part for each item in the archive. In this video we're going to take a look at editing that custom template part. We called it archive content animal. I'll double click it and we're using sublime text 2 again. Now this file right now is simply a copy of content.php which tries to be all things to all content. So we're actually going to rip out just about everything in here, and it'll become very, very simple. You'll probably do this for just about any theme you choose to do this with. I'm going to update the comments just for my own edification. Now each item is an article, and each one has a header. And the first thing we have here is, is sticky and it shows the title and the entry format, etc. And then there's an else, and if it's not sticky, it simply shows the title. But we're never going to be sticky, so I'm going to remove that whole block. There. Now we have an H1 with a class of entry title, a link to the permalink, and they're printing the title, and the link, and the H1. Just to be sure we're editing the right thing, I'm going to put an exclamation point right here after the title. And reload. And sure enough, there's an exclamation point after each one. So I'll take that back out. Now here's a block that says if the post type is post, print this information. It will never be. This is the animals archive. So I'm just going to rip that whole thing out as well. And then, if comments are open, or if it's password required. We're not going to use comments or passwording, so I'm going to rip all of that right out. There. Now our header has nothing in it except the title. Now the next thing is interesting. It says, if is search, and then only displays excerpt. We actually want to display excerpt all the time. The default else is to show the full content, which is what we don't want. So I'm going to take out the first line of the test and then all of the else text. There. Now let's go take a look. There we are. Now we have just the excerpt. Now let's take a look at what's in our footer. There's lots and lots of information here. They're setting show sep to false. And we'll look into why that is later. But here we have if is object in taxonomy category. Hide category text when not supported. We're not using categories at all. That's a completely different kind of content type. So we're going to take all of that out. This is the beginning of an if, another if, and then here's the end if and the second end if. So we can take out everything right there. And then we do the same thing for post tag. 
in case there are tags. And here's our second end if. So we're going to rip out all of that. And then if comments are open, we're not using comments, so we can take out that whole thing. And now there's nothing left to use the show sup variable, so we rip that out. Now all we have is an edit link for people who are logged in. And you can see that right here. That's convenient, so I'll leave that. And now you can see that our file is much, much simpler. We have a title, excerpt, and edit link. In our next video, we'll take a look at how to put a photo on the left side of the excerpt. In our last video, we made it so that each item in our animals archive has only the title and the excerpt. In this video, we're going to make it also have an image. The function we're going to use is called the post thumbnail. And all it does is display the featured image. It can display a number of sizes and have some attributes. Here you can see how we can set the size. And then the attributes are an array. There's also another function called has post thumbnail, which tests to see if there is one. So if there isn't one, we don't try and print it and look silly. We're going to use code from a number of examples on this page. The default sizes for thumbnails are thumbnail, medium, large, and full. Optionally, you can put in an array of dimensions. Here it shows linking to the post from that thumbnail. Here it shows linking to the large size image. And here it is putting in some align left CSS classes. Let's put some of this code in our template. We know we want the test. So I'm going to copy that. And then, right here, next to the excerpt, I put in that test. Close the test. And close that PHP. So now, we have the test to see if we have a thumbnail. The other bit that I want is this one, because I want my image aligned left, and I want to use the thumbnail size. So we grab that, we paste it into our file, and we save. And let's take a look and see how it looks now. And there we are. The border around the image comes from CSS from this theme. Not all themes would provide that. But on this one, it looks nice. Let's go up in image size and see how that looks. That's pretty cool also. But it's about twice the height of my excerpts. So I think I'm going to go back to thumbnail. There we are. And I think that looks pretty great. But you can't click the image to go to the article. So let's do that. And we're going to link to the permalink, except because I'm using echo, I want get permalink. And then at the other end of this, I need to echo my closing link. There, let's take a look now. And now it's a link to kangaroo and elephant. And because it's a link, when you hover, you get a nice little gray change in the border. Again, that's a theme thing, not necessarily related to my code.
So now we have a fairly attractive animals archive. In our next video, we'll look at how to make the single animal template also attractive, as well as print out a lot of the meta information that we've included. In our last several videos, we made the archive for our animals custom post type look pretty sharp. Let's take a look at our elephant. So here we are looking at our elephant page. All it really has is a title, the content, there's a next link for the next animal, an edit link if I'm logged in, and some meta information about who posted, etc. We know that we'd like to put in our featured image, and we know that we want to put in the meta information that we created, and possibly show some taxonomy information. So let's take a look at how we can get started with that. Easy Content Types created for us a template file called single-animals.php. Single.php is the template for all single items, but it gets overridden when you create a custom single with a post type slug in the name, like single-animals. So let's peek inside this one. It's pretty simple. Let's change our comment. There we are. There's our primary content area. And then it says, while we have posts, create the little navigation area. That's the next button that I showed you. And then get a template part for content-single. And then there's a comments template. We're not going to have comments on our animals, so I can just take that right out. Now, content-single is actually the default template file for all singles. I'm going to create one called animal-single and we'll hit save. Now if we look at our page, our content should disappear. Sure enough, because we haven't created animal-single.php yet. Let's do that. So I'm going to take content-single, copy it, I'm going to do command V to paste, and it puts it right here at the top. So now I'm going to call mine animal-single and move it down into my theme. And now our content should reappear because it's simply an exact copy of the content-single file. And let's take a look at what's inside that. Similar to the original archive template. This has a lot of material in it that we're not going to need and we'll end up ripping a lot of it out. Let's start right at the top. Here's a section that says if our post type is post then print 2011 posted on. But it's not, so we can rip out that entire section. Here we have the content and links. to the next and previous articles. And then here we have a footer full of information. This whole block right here deals with post categories, which we're not going to use. So let's just rip that right out. Here's our edit link, which I like. Usually people can't see it. And then there's some information here about authorship. It says here, if a user has filled out the description, and this is a multi-author blog, show a bio on their entries. But we don't want that. So, we're going to rip out all of this. And there we are. So now we have just the title, the content, and an edit link. Let's save and see how our page looks. There we go. You can see that the author information disappeared from the bottom, which is fine. I didn't really want that there anyway. So now we have title and content. In our next video, we'll take a look at how to put in meta information and an image. In our last video, we created a template 
for our single animal. In this video, we're going to edit that template, and we're going to put in our featured image, as well as our meta information. Here's our single template. Now we already have some experience putting in an image. We did it on our archive. So let's open that file up. And here's the code that we used. So I'm simply going to copy that and then paste it right here. The only difference is that I want it to be aligned right. And I want medium. Also, because we're already on this post, we don't need the link. So, now we'll save and take a look. And there we are. Now this works pretty well for the images that I have because I selected tall, narrow images. If I had particularly wide images, it might not work as well. You'll need to understand your content when deciding where to place that featured image. But that's all there is to placing it. Now let's look at placing in some metadata. To get our meta information, we're going to use a function called getPostCustom. What this actually does is get all the meta information for a given post, and then you can choose to print which part you wish. It wants a post ID, but it's optional. If you're on a single, then it already knows about the post ID. So you can do something very simple like this. Except I don't want mine called custom fields. I'm going to call mine meta fields. There. Now it should be getting all of my meta fields. But it's not doing anything with them yet. So right down here, right below the content, I'm going to do a test. I'm going to use the PHP function print r, which tells us about what's inside a variable. And because I want it to look nice, I'm going to wrap it in the pre tags, which is just plain HTML. So I'm going to save this and reload our page. And here we have all of the meta information for this post. Here you can see our habitat and whether or not it's visible and the diet. Now each of these is an array with one item in it. So we're going to need to print that in a very particular way. And I'll show you how that's done. I'm going to leave that array there for now. And right below the content, I'm going to put in an h3, call it habitat. All plain HTML so far. And then I'm going to say print meta fields. ECPT underscore habitat, and then the first item in that array, which is zero. And there we are. So now I save, reload, and here we have an H3 with our habitat information. I don't like the way H3 looks. Let's try H2. much better. 
And now let's do the same thing for diet. I'm simply going to copy these two lines, paste them here, change that to diet, change this to diet, and save, and reload. And now we have habitat and diet. Now, I'm going to show you how to do an important test. Let's edit our elephant. And remove the diet. Now we simply have the word diet with no diet at all, which feels a little foolish. So before we print our diet, let's test to see if we actually have a diet. So we'll open some PHP, and we'll say if metafields ECPT diet 0 does not equal nothing, then print this stuff. And then we'll end our test. Like that. So now this curly brace matches this curly brace. And we're saying if it's not empty, print the title and the variable itself. So now it's not there at all. The variable still exists, but it's empty. There. That's my unscientific diet for elephants. I update. Reload. And now you can see the variable has content, and now it's printing. So now I'm going to remove my little print R. I want to add my test for habitat. and end my test for habitat. So now we save. And here we have our elephant with the image on the right, our habitat, and diet. In our next video, we'll take a look at dealing with taxonomies. Each of our animals has several taxonomies. We have habitats, classes, and diets. We'd like to print some of that information on the single. Each of the items within this taxonomy is called a term. So we want to get these terms and print them. Before we get too far, though, I want to show you just how many options we have for getting terms. There's get terms, get the terms, WP get post terms, get term by, get the term list, get term, and so on. We have lots and lots of options. Most of these get information about the terms, including the term itself, so that you can do something with it programmatically. So we're going to use get the term list which says returns an HTML string of taxonomy terms associated with a post and given taxonomy. Terms are linked to the respective term listing pages. And that's exactly what we want. It needs a post ID. It needs a taxonomy. And optionally, something written before the list, a separator between each item, and something after the list. So here's an example. Echo, get the term list, 
here's the post ID, the taxonomy, a leader, and a separator. Let's go take a look at some of our taxonomies to get the actual slugs. Habitat. We'll do habitat first. So let's just copy this line right here, and I'll put it right below the title. And we don't want people, we want habitat. And we will put habitat like that. Now let's just save this and reload our elephant. And there we have habitat, jungle, savanna, desert, and wetlands. In each of these is a link. Now I'm on the savanna page, and it shows both kangaroos and elephants. Now, we also want class. So let's simply copy this line, and put in class. Like that, and save and reload. Ah, and it put it right on there. So, what we really want is paragraph tags around each one. Or we might want a line break. Yes, paragraph tags is too long. So, we'll just put in a line break here. There, much better. And now we want diet. And that one is a singular diet. So we'll put in another BR. And we copy this. Paste it here, put in diet, and save, and there we are. So now we have habitat, class, and diet, which are our taxonomies. Now we could do a number of things with this. If we wanted, we could put it in a little box below the image. Or we could put it in a little box above the image. Or we could put it anywhere else on the whole page. The point is, that's how easy it was to print our taxonomy information. Now you'll note that the taxonomy archive page is similarly ugly to the original animal archive page. In another video, we'll take a look at how to make that attractive as well. In an earlier video, we made this very nice looking archive for our animals. However, there's more than just this archive. If we click on elephant and then click on savanna, here's another one. But this is an archive of all the animals who have a habitat on the savanna. So we want to make this one look just as good as the other one. Fortunately, it's not too difficult. Let's take a look at what Easy Content Types made for us. Here we have taxonomy-class.php, diet.php, and dash habitat.php. The default would be taxonomy.php, but using the slug in the file name, we can have a custom one for each one. So let's open up taxonomy-habitat.php. Here you can see it was copied from the default archive. There, now we've updated the comment. Now, similar to the other archive, we're going to rip out just about everything in here. Here's the page title, and we don't need day, month, or year. So all of that comes out, and the end if. There. 
and we don't want it to be blog archives. On the regular archive, there was a very nice custom function just for our rendering the title. Fortunately, for taxonomies, there is as well. It's called single cat title. So I'm going to copy this. Paste it here. And we'll save and go back and take a look. And there we are. Now, this allows for a prefix. So we're going to put that in there as well. And there we are, Habitat Savannah. Now, we have the Content Nav, and then each individual item, and then the Content Nav again below. Now, we started this with if have posts. So if we have posts, do all this stuff. Here's our else, else print nothing was found. And that's fine, we will leave that. So now all that's left is to make each individual item look just like the one on the main archive. And fortunately we can use the exact same file. So let's open that up. We're gonna look at archive animals. And we're going to copy this line right here. And then, instead of getting the default content.php, we get our shiny new archive-content-animal.php. And we reload. And there we are. Now it looks exactly like our other archive. And now, we want to do the same thing for class. Fortunately, we can copy every bit of code on here and paste it onto the other one. So I'm going to start here at line 17 and copy everything. Then I'm going to open taxonomy class. And I'm going to start here at line 17 and remove it all and paste in what we took from the other one and save. But now we simply need to change the title because it's not habitat. And there we are, class mammal. Now we'll go back and we will look at a diet. Again, kangaroo and elephants both eat grasses. So now I'm going to open diet. Start at line 17, take everything out, paste everything in from habitat change this to diet and save and reload and there we have diet grasses and a nice archive we're winding up our video series on how to work with custom post types with Pippin's easy content types plugin let's go over a little of what we did We created a post type called animals and we set up all of its various options. Also, we created a meta box with some extra fields. Then we also created three taxonomies for sorting our animals. Then on the front end, we created 
a custom archive page to make it look different from, say, a blog post archive page. We also created custom templates for single animals that included printing our taxonomies, the content, the featured image, as well as some meta information. Then we also created some archive templates for each term in each taxonomy. The number of things you can do with custom post types is pretty much limitless. I've made them for real estate listings, for restaurant menu items, for car sales listings, all kinds of things. I made a particularly large set for a university one time that involved courses and syllabi and teachers and students and all of that. And they all integrated with each other. I hope you're able to take what you learned here and build something really magnificent. Custom post types allow you to twist WordPress into a real content management system that can be just about anything that you want.